when I was 12 years old or so, I was so deep, neck high into BMX bikes, BMX racing, jumping bikes, tearing them down, fixing bikes. I was just so into it. And I remember my dad once saying, what do you think you're gonna do with that in your future life? And I told him all I wanted to do was, was to own a van and travel around racing BMX bikes at the time. I was 12. But my enthusiasm and excitement for bikes and everything that surrounded them, the culture, every bit of it, I just, I lived in that. I loved it. And you remember, you had something when you were a kid where you were so enthusiastic about what that was and you just couldn't get enough of it. If it was sports or education or something. Today, I see it in kids where they're just obsessed with gaming and, or trading shoes and sneaker business and all that kind of thing. And as I've gotten older, I think as we all get older, we lose that childlike enthusiasm and obsession and what that power of having that brings when it comes to creating success. So I saw this Instagram post today and it was a character of a uh, character of Warren Buffett and it said take right down the top 25 things you're into you want to accomplish you want to do rank them one to five the best five and then get rid of the last 20 and focus on the five for the rest of your life because those five are the what matters the remaining 20 don't matter enough so I got to thinking about that. What are my top 25 things I want to accomplish in my life? And then what are the top five? What are the five things that I can go after with that childlike enthusiasm? What are those things I can obsess about that aren't harmful to me and my family, but instead beneficial to me and my family? As we start the new year, I think about 2020 and what I've learned and what has happened in 2020 for me and my family. I've thought about what I want 2021 to be. I'll be 52 this year, six months or so away from it. And I'm like, you know, when I turned 50, I wanted to live the best 50 more years going forward. And if I could do that, I would deem my life a success. Well, two years or a year and a half into it, I'm now asking the question, now what do you have to do to dial in and make life that much better for the remaining, what, 48 years? So number five on my list is travel. Because of COVID, we haven't traveled as much as a family. And I don't think a lot of people have. What I learned from traveling is it's educational. It expands your mind. It frees you up from the chains of the world you live in day to day. You see people, you get new, see things. There's culture. It just creates awareness and curiosity. And I think that's what has built who I am over the time is being able to subject myself to different environments and experience incredible experiences overall. So number five is travel. All right, so for my next one, it's physical and mental health. See, I believe if you don't have a good solid physical core, your mental side of things will not survive will not be productive and positive. So that physical side of things has to come in, in focus. You gotta go out and exercise and move that body. Your body was designed to be in motion. And when it's in motion and you're building and strengthening that body, your mental side comes along with it. Mentally being positive. A Couple years ago, I was diagnosed with attention 
Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, ADHD. Anyhow, once I was diagnosed with it, I understood why the previous 50 years of my life, or excuse me, 48 years of my life were so chaotic and why I had great ideas, but I could never follow through with them. And once I took hold of my mental stability and creating stability and focus, all of a sudden things have started to come together. Risk taking became um, more uh, beneficial from my family and I. Um, seeing the world in a different way, being able to stay calm and focused and driven on one thing for long periods of time created great results. So taking care of my mental st you know, standpoint on life will be fueled by my physical, physically taking care of myself. And those two things working in the right way, I think big things can be accomplished. You know, when you're not living your ideal lifestyle, you're not a nice person oftentimes. You're not kind and helpful. And I have noticed at times when I'm not living that ideal lifestyle, I'm just an ass. And my family doesn't like it and they don't deserve it. So my other goal this year, well, just in the future, is to be a nicer person. To be more empathetic and calm and collective and just be a better person overall. You know, as a kid, I was hilarious. I was funny. I laughed all the time. And as I've gotten older, I don't laugh as much. And recently I've started laughing and cracking jokes and doing really funny things. And it feels good. And the people around me are laughing, not at me, but with me. And I think that's a big part of who I am. So smiling, laughing, and just being a nice person. So my next one is more materialistic. Um, I've been, I guess we all grew up in a, in a way that shapes our, how we look at the world and how we do things. And I've grown up and as an adult have measured success by the stuff. Uh, and, and in the end, it's really not a great measurement of success, but what is is joy and happiness and feeling like you're making a difference and accomplishing things. But I will say this one is, well, it is a little bit materialistic. I used to live out in Colorado uh, in the 90s and uh, we loved it. My wife and I moved out there, um, two Honda Civics and all of our stuff crammed into it. Didn't know where we were gonna land, ended up sleeping in a tent for 30 days in Breckenridge, Colorado. And when it snowed, they asked us to leave and we ended up going to Boulder and ended up in Boulder for Boulder and Laramie, Wyoming and Breckenridge again over a seven year period. It's where my first daughter was born. It's the place that makes me happiest. It's where my soul feels full and just where it should be. Um, I'm more creative. I'm, I'm overall just I love it and it's really not just Colorado but it's the mountains and I'm a mountain person as you can see here I'm growing a little bit of a, a COVID uh, beard um, and in Florida when it's hot it's a little brutal but it is really a representation of who I am and I miss it but I'm also a little older now and being cold in the winter well that, that drags me down a little bit so my goal my what I want to happen in the future is to have a place out west uh, in the mountains that we can spend the summers at where we can live at and if it's just to rent a place for three to six months of the year or if it's to actually buy something just being there actually creates happiness for me and so as a part of my five things I'm focusing on for the foreseeable future creating that world uh, and universe of being able to be in the mountains and uh, being able to ha be there and do this and educate and uh, invest and understand and, ed and, and just become a better person. That's, that's what I wanna, that's what I'm shooting for in life. Uh, I, that's what I'm shooting for in life.
All right, so that brings me to how does this all happen? Um, and it's my final one, and it's about making money. Um, there's no uh, getting around it. Um, you got to make a living. You've got to make income. <clears throat> and if you've done the homework and you've priced things out of how much it's going to cost, um, Tim Ferriss wrote a book a number of years ago called The 4-Hour Workweek. And he talked about generating uh, income for certain things he wanted. And he used uh, Aston Martin as an example. And so what he did was he created a business that would generate the monthly payment for the Aston Martin. Well, for a lot of people that's hard to do. It's hard to conceive that idea, but that's how I think. And that and Rich Dad Poor Dad were two books that really shaped my view on making money. And so making money is one of the top five things that I need to, that I'm determined to do and continue to do. I have a great living that I make now as a financial advisor, but I need multiple sources of income. And so for the foreseeable future, that is one of my focuses, is to create different sources of income. I love real estate. I love investment markets. Um, I love the business startup uh, mentality. I love being a part of something that you can uh, put some effort into, put some you know sweat equity, but also you know some capital and get a return on that. It's that whole entrepreneur, business development, investing mindset. And for the foreseeable future, that is a big part of funding all these other things that I I have uh, if out you know I have for myself. I've got to have um, cash flow to support the. Uh, living out west, uh, I've got to have cash flow to be able to travel. I've got to have cash flow to be able to physically and mentally take care of myself. I mean, the one of the biggest uh, causes of divorce in the United States is cash flow or the lack of cash flow. Um, so having that multiple sources of income is really a major focus of my life. Now, as I've gone through all of these uh, five things, not one of them is, has a higher priority than the other. I'm looking at these as five things that will make my life enjoy, uh, more enjoyable, uh, be a joyful person, to be happy, to be enthusiastic and inspiring. So all five hold an equal weighting. I have to pay attention. I have to work on each one of them each day to make them happen. And so as you enter this new year of 2021, I challenge you to figure out what those five things in your life that if you focused on them super hardcore uh, and develop them, that they would make big leaps and bounds in your creating of joy and excitement and happiness in your life. Write them down, review them every day, create a bit a plan around them, run them like a business, and make them, figuratively speaking, profitable for your future. I look forward to going into 2021 on a good note. Uh, we've learned a lot in 2020. I say take it all, build it into a game plan, and go attack 2021 with spirit, gusto, and joy. Live loud.